spreading by word of mouth. Like much of the new counterculture, it was against all politics. It distrusted all the old systems of power, left and right, because they were just trying to force you into their version of reality. Thornley also published his novel, with Lee Harvey Oswald as the central figure. It was called The Idle Warriors. But New Orleans was also the city where Lee Harvey Oswald had lived before the Kennedy assassination. And as a result, Thornley came to the notice of the man who was going to be the main creator of the JFK conspiracy theory. He was the district attorney of New Orleans, called Jim Garrison. Garrison said that Oswald had just been part of a giant conspiracy that included the CIA, big business, the news media and anti-Castro Cubans, who together had killed the president. There's no question about that. There was a conspiracy. A number of men in, were involved. An apparatus which was lethal in nature, uh, of which Lee Harvey, Harvey Oswald was a part, assigned a role essentially as decoy. Now, don't ask me what the organization is, because I can't say. But the implication clearly is the Central Intelligence Agency, your own security organization in the United States. It almost sounds like that, doesn't it? I have no comment about that. Jim Garrison believed that the modern democratic system in America was just a facade. That behind it was another secret system of power that really controlled the country. But you could never discover it through normal means, because it was so deeply hidden. Garrison wrote a memo to his staff, explaining how you could uncover this secret world. He called it time and propinquity. You didn't bother with meaning or with logic, he said, because that will always be hidden. Instead, you look for patterns, strange coincidences and links that may seem to have no meaning, but are actually telltale signs on the surface of the hidden system of power underneath. This theory was going to have a very powerful effect in the future because it would lead to a profound shift in how many people understood the world. Because what it said was that in a dark world of hidden power, you couldn't expect everything to make sense. That it was pointless to try and understand the meaning of why something happened, because that would always be hidden from you. What you looked for were the patterns. And when Garrison read Kerry Thornley's novel, he saw a pattern. Not only had Thornley been in the Marines with Oswald and written a novel about him, but he had come to live in the same city that Oswald had lived in before the assassination. And in 1967, Garrison accused Thornley of being part of the conspiracy. Thornley was furious. He knew that Garrison was wrong. But he also hated the very idea of conspiracy theories. He believed that they were one of the ways those in power controlled you. Conspiracy theories made you believe that there were hidden forces that really controlled the world. And that made you as an individual feel weak and powerless. Suspicion, he believed, was just another form of control. Thornley wanted to find ways to free people from that kind of conditioning that held them back as individuals. There are ways of deconditioning people. Uh, and uh, this is what I'm interested in. I'm interested in finding some technique by which great masses of people can be uh, broken out of their authoritarian conditioning all at once to figure out exactly what that type of enlightenment is, that type of liberation from authoritarian conditioning is, and how to achieve it uh, on a wholesale basis. Thornley was right that most of what Garrison alleged was complete fantasy. Despite all the patterns, he could produce no evidence.